today I'm going to be showing you how to remove and refit a leaking output seal on this particular gearbox, the 6S850. First of all, what we need to do is remove the actual bolt itself. This is a 22mm bolt. You'll need an air gun for this because this is actually tightened to 150 newton meters. So remove that and just put it to one side. The next thing we need to do is take the uh, output flange off the main shaft. Now this is an interference fit so it is very, very tight. What I'm going to be using is a three-legged puller plus a special adapter that we have. If you don't have a special adapter then if you use a, um, a socket, uh, something, uh, an impact socket then that will suffice. So what we're doing is we're fitting the three-legged puller to the output flange. Put my 19 mil on and change the direction. Make sure that's nice and central and then you should be able to pull the output flange from the main shaft. If it goes tight at any point, just make sure you haven't hit the actual output flange when you're pulling it up. So there we go, let's remove the output flange. What we'll do is just take the puller off. Put the output flange to one side. To check your seal track, make sure that's not worn. Now what we need to do is remove this seal, the faulty seal. Now this is done by getting a screwdriver. Sometimes you can flip them out. What you need to be careful of is not to damage the housing. Yeah, that came out quite nicely. If they are tight, sometimes you need to get a screwdriver in behind and just flip behind it, yeah. So what we need to do now is fit the new seal. Standard 6S850 seal. Now this has a sealing spring washer, so what we want to do is just put a bit of Vaseline inside there to hold it in place while we knock it into position so it doesn't spring out. Go all the way around to give it that assistance. Obviously, we have a special tool, a ZF tool, for locating these down to the right depth. For each individual gearbox, there is a special tool that can be purchased for doing this work. So what we want to do is just gent gently Offer the new seal into position, being careful that you're knocking it in evenly. All the way down to the nylon stop. Remove that, just have a visual check that the spring hasn't popped out. It shouldn't have because of the Vaseline holding it in place. What we need to do now is refit the output flange. Now we ZF recommend you uh, uh, eat this to 120 degrees to go over the interference fit shaft. As you can see, you won't get it in position without warming this. What I need to do is put this on an in induction heater uh, to warm it to the relevant temperature. Okay, so the output flange is uh, heated to 120 degrees. So hopefully this should slip over the shaft quite easily and straight all the way home. So that's in position. I'm going to remove my gloves and get my bolts. Now because we've got a uh, spline between the flange and the um, shaft itself, what I'm going to do is just put a bit of sealant around the washer to 
seal that area. No need a lot. And a bit on the bolts as well. What we do then, being careful not to touch the flange, screw the 22mm at a bolt in position. You can run this up using an egg. That's run up. But what we're going to do now is torque it to 150 newton meters. Now, depending on the size of the flange, um, that tolerance will change. It's dead easy to remember. It's basically the width of the flange: 150 millimeters, 150 newton meters, 120, 120 newton meters. So this one's going to be torqued to 150 newton meters going to put a screwdriver in one of the bolt holes and locate it on the housing. Again being careful not to touch the output flange. And then what we do is we torque that to a say 150 newton meters. There we go. So there you go. Another successful task completed. For more information, please visit our website.